Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I was thinking about my high school years recently, and while I wouldn't mind going back and reliving them, I also hate the high school itself because it was just a boring, generic high school. I wish the school itself was more like Hollywood Arts High School, because then it would have been so much more interesting. When you forget about the war, we're gonna have a pop quiz! Finally, a high school with their priorities in line. How can you think about a pop quiz when we're at war? Never mind. Victorious, a show about a girl adjusting to her life at a performing arts high school, getting used to learning how to be a performer, garnered peak popularity, and massive amounts of viewership and ended at an abrupt and tragic time that also solidified Nickelodeon's fate of plunging into a never-ending tunnel with no light at the end of it. Created by Dan Schneider and is, in my opinion, the last Nickelodeon show he created that I would truly consider good, as all the other shows he created after Victorious before leaving Nickelodeon were either mediocre and predictable or bad. The show was pretty good during its heyday and is still beloved by its fans after all these years. Of course, there are a lot of other Nick shows with dedicated fan bases, but I've seen people more passionately express their love for Victorious compared to something like Tough Puppy. Like any human being with a soul, I watched Victorious while it was on the air, and I enjoyed it for the most part. I was feeling that fanboy loving me kick in again, so I wanted to talk about the history of the show. So as usual, I'll only be talking about the show's development, how long it was on the air for, and some things that happened around the time the show ended. And before we do that, I want to talk about my personal history with the show, because I sure do have fond memories of it even to this day. So now, let's get started. I remember when I first saw an advertisement for Victorious, advertising it as a brand new show starring Victoria Justice, created by the same creator as iCarly, Drake and Josh, and Zoe 101. But at the time, I actually wasn't too interested in watching it. Not because I thought it looked bad, but because I felt I was spent too much of my life watching Nickelodeon, so I was trying to pay less attention to everything on the network. When you see a few episodes of Fanboy and Chum Chum and The Troop, that's probably a sign you need to move on. So when the show premiered, I just didn't really feel like watching it. I had seen a couple clips from a couple episodes here and there, but didn't watch a full episode. Then one night in the summer of 2010, my parents and I were waiting to do fireworks and ended up watching the Victorious episode Survival of the Hottest while we were waiting. And I walked away thinking that it was pretty good. Then a couple months later, my family and I went to Ohio for my grandparents 50th wedding anniversary. We stayed at a massive hotel and while we were there, I watched the episode Wi-Fi in the Sky and it clicked with me. There were a lot of funny scenes in that episode that I just loved. And for the rest of its run, I made an effort to see as many episodes live for the first time as I could. I also loved a lot of the music the show made. I even downloaded some of it from iTunes and would listen to it on the school bus sometimes. And when the show ended, I was as devastated as the next guy, but I had also recently discovered the Team Nick channel, and that helped me cope with the fact that it was over. Especially because I couldn't do this yet. Every so often, I would experience a nostalgia swing for it and would rewatch it constantly until I get nostalgic for another show, rinse and repeat. And to this day, it's still one of my favorites to go back to, no matter how many times I revisit it. Which now means it's time to go back to the development of Victorious, and its roots trace all the way back to 1994. As we all know, all that was created to be a diverse, kid-friendly version of Saturday Night Live starring teenagers. The first six seasons are undoubtedly the best era of the franchise. After season six ended in November 2000, the show went on hiatus to be rebooted a little over a year later in January 2002. Season seven aired for the first time on January 19, 2002 with an all new cast and no previous cast members returning as series regulars. Later that year, season eight premiered and a new cast member was added, Jamie Lynn Spears. She stayed for seasons 8 and 9, and after the latter, she was given her own show to premiere a couple years later in January 2005, which would later be titled Zoe 101. After the first season of the show, one of the cast members, Kristen Herrera, who played Dana Cruz, didn't return for season 2 onwards. So in her place, a new character was created, Lola Martinez, who was played by no other than Victoria Justice. She would be a main character for the rest of the series until it ended in May 2008. The character of Lola became popular among fans. 
at least compared to some other characters from the show. Creator Dan Schneider saw potential with her, and around the time Zoe 101 ended, he met with her to discuss ideas for a potential series that she could star in. Also around the time of Zoe 101, one of Nickelodeon's biggest rivals, Disney, had been very successful with a musical franchise about teenagers called High School Musical, which generated revenue not just through TV and home media, but through music as well. During the meeting with Schneider, Victoria Justice mentioned going to a performing arts middle school. That idea intrigued him, and also could tell that kids around this time had desires to be stars, for better or for worse. These days it's for worse. <laughs> On August 13, 2008, the deal was made for Victoria to star in her own show, which would be about a girl at a performing arts high school. Nickelodeon also partnered with the Columbia slash Epic label group of Sony Music Entertainment to produce the music for the series. The show was eventually named Victorious, and Victoria's character was Tori Vega. Hey, Tori Vega? Girl. Several other main characters were created, and actors were cast as them. Daniela Monet came on as Trina Vega, Tori's older sister. Leon Thomas III was cast as Andre Harris, a musician and Tori's best friend. Ariana Grande signed on as Kat Valentine, a bipolar ditzy girl. Matt Bennett came on as Robbie Shapiro, a goof nerd with a ventriloquist dummy named Rex. Avin Jogia was cast as Beck Oliver, the main actor of the school. And Elizabeth Gilly signed on as Jade West, a mean goth girl who can sing and act and who was also Beck's girlfriend. In terms of acting talent, the show was already set for life. Victorious was filmed at Nick on Sunset, the same soundstage as iCarly and some seasons of Drake and Josh and all that. Exterior shots of the high school were filmed at Burbank High School. The pilot was filmed in 2009 and it was soon approved by Nickelodeon. Season 1 consisted of 20 episodes, including the pilot, filmed from October 5th, 2009 to April 14th, 2010, and the series premiered with the pilot episode on March 27th, 2010, right after the 2010 Kids' Choice Awards. The series premiere garnered a total of 5.7 million views, making it the second most viewed live-action Nickelodeon series premiere. Only behind Big Time Rush, that is if you count the pilot as a sneak preview episode and the official premiere occurring in January 2010. In my opinion, that doesn't count the way you think it would, but that's not today's topic. The series gained mixed but mostly positive reviews for the performances by the actors, whether by acting or singing. Season 1 continued throughout 2010, and it was renewed for a season 2 rather quickly, which would consist of 13 episodes. The program's first two-part episode, Freak the Freak Out, premiered on November 26, 2010, involving a plot where Jade and Kat get banned from a karaoke club, so they ask Tori to help get revenge on them. In my opinion, it feels like this was around the time where Victorious truly started to gain peak popularity, with some of the songs from this show getting music videos produced for them, and would also be available to download from iTunes. Season 1 continued into 2011 and wrapped up on March 26, 2011 with the episode Sleepover at Psychowitz's. The filming for Season 2 started on October 4, 2010 and wrapped up on February 23, 2011. Season 2 premiered on April 2, 2011, right before the 2011 Kids' Choice Awards and premiered to 6.1 million viewers making it the most watched episode of the whole series. While season 2 was airing, a massive crossover episode between iCarly and Victorious premiered, called I Party with Victorious. While it was an iCarly episode, it's still an important and iconic part in Victorious history. The movie was filmed between seasons 1 and 2 of Victorious, along with the rest of iCarly season 4. This movie was about a guy named Steven Carson dating both Carly Shay from iCarly and Tori Vega at the same time, so the iCarly gang go down to LA to catch Steven in the act of cheating. 
It ended with Leave It All to Shine, a mashup of the iCarly and Victorious theme songs, Leave It All to Me and Make It Shine respectively, signifying it as the most impactful Nickelodeon crossover event, if we don't count the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour trilogy from the mid-2000s. Season 2 continued all throughout 2011, with its big hour-long special being Locked Up, where Tori and the gang go to a foreign country for semester break and end up in jail after an incident involving the chancellor of the country and have to escape via a musical performance in prison. This was significant because while the show produced mostly original music, this movie featured a cover of the Jackson 5 song, I Want You Back. The 13 episodes of season 2 brought the series to a total of 33 episodes. In the summer of 2011, the show was renewed for a season 3. Filming started on October 3rd, 2011 and continued into 2012. It took a while for this to be confirmed, but season 3 would be filmed to 27 episodes, bringing the total to 60 episodes for the whole show. Season 3 premiered on December 3, 2011 with the series Christmas episode, A Christmas Tory, and Season 2 wrapped up on December 6, 2011 with the episode Bloop Torius, a blooper special. Asterisk? While A Christmas Tory is filmed as a Season 3 episode, some listings list it as part of Season 2, with the actual Season 3 premiere being The Breakfast Bunch, a parody of everybody's favorite 80s teen movie, The Breakfast Club. I personally see it as a season 3 episode, and that's how Paramount Plus lists it. And while I hate Paramount Plus, I agree with season 3 consisting of 27 episodes, with the first one being A Christmas Tory. Season 3 aired most of its episodes throughout 2012, and had another two-parter called Tory Goes Platinum, where Tory gets the opportunity to sing the opening musical number at the Platinum Music Awards, but the producer was more interested in making her look and act like a diva than focusing on her music. The show was doing very well around this time. The episodes were good, the music was banging, and the cast was gaining so much popularity. Things were looking bright. <sighs> Around the summer of 2012, the cast, crew, and creator found out from fans online that there wouldn't be a season 4 of Victorious. From the fans online! The show wouldn't even get a proper series finale, which felt like the biggest slap in the face to everybody on Earth, including the cast members. And because of this, the network took the remaining episodes of season 3 that hadn't released at this time and just turned them into a season 4, but I just view that as season 3 part 2. The rest of these episodes aired throughout 2012, and the final episode, Victory Yes, aired on February 2nd, 2013. And the very next day... And that is the history of Victorious airing on Nickelodeon. The reason the show ended is still hazy. Fans suspected it was because the upcoming spin-off, Sam and Cat, but that was debunked with Dan Schneider saying he intended for those two shows to run at the same time. But eventually, it was determined that it was cancelled because the executives at Nickelodeon just wanted to move on. That's code for Nickelodeon hates their fans and they don't want them to be happy. The spin-off Sam and Cat only ran for one season of 36 episodes from June 8th, 2013 to July 7th, 2014. And after that, nothing! Of course, reruns of Victorious would continue on Teen Nick for years later, but nothing more on Nickelodeon. The show itself also created a website called TheSlap.com, which actually existed in real life and fans could go to it. Similar to iCarly.com from iCarly, or www.amandaplease.com from The Amanda Show. It was mainly just for supplementary material separate from the show itself, featuring characters posting pictures and updating their status after a new episode was released for the first time, and other random videos featuring the characters. And while it wasn't updated for years after the series ended, the site continued to stay up for browsing and watching those videos and wasn't terminated until April 2018, when Dan Schneider left Nickelodeon. And Nick on Sunset was demolished roughly around the same time in late 2017, eliminating the place where they filmed the Asphalt Cafe scenes. And that is the basic history of Victorious. It was a fun time to be a part of, outside of the absolutely tragic ending. I will never forgive Nickelodeon for what they did, and I'm sure it's tied to why they're going downhill non-stop. 
But even though Victorious was cancelled the way it was, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. It's still devastating, don't get me wrong, but it does have an amazing legacy. The episodes are funny, and they can never be tarnished or taken away from us, since they had actual love and creativity put into them. The music on the show is still amazing to this day, and it's leagues better than music coming out this decade. All the cast members are iconic to this day, each for their own reasons, and they've expressed positive feelings about working on the show and getting to work with each other. They've gone to so many places together, whether it was for interviews, to perform, or just to hang out. The series did create one of the biggest breakout stars to this day, but the way she became famous is actually justified compared to other breakout artists in my opinion. <coughs> when the show was put on Netflix, it regained new widespread popularity, and so did the cast themselves when they had a video call to celebrate the show's 10th anniversary in 2020. And another star even recently became a DJ, going on tours and mostly playing songs from Victorious and that era of Nickelodeon as a whole. So while the show didn't get the finale it, the cast, crew, and fans deserved, I think Victorious is a prime example of media that may be gone, but never forgotten. Oh right, I almost forgot. Who put my dog in a wedding dress? It was hilarious. You don't gotta convince me. Victorious was a great show, and I'm happy I was there during its prime, as well as a couple years worth of reruns on Teen Nick. I hate the fate the show received, being cancelled way too early when there was still so much potential to be unearthed, whether or not it got a proper finale. But I'm also happy the show came out at the time it did, and it got the humor and the creativity that it deserved. And I guess all we could do nowadays is look back at the series in retrospect, but at least I could be content knowing that no other good Nickelodeon show suffered the same fate or a similar fate that Victorious did. Okay, so Nickelodeon clearly just has no quality control.